What is an inference? It's a conclusion that you come up with based on what you already know to understand what you don't know. Basically an idea you have based on your knowledge and clues from the book. To make an inference, you have to become a detective. Still confused? Well, here's an example. Look at this sentence. As a new student walked into the classroom, sweat rolled down her face and her stomach started to hurt. We want to figure out what is happening to the new student. Since the author doesn't directly say, we need to make an inference. Okay, put your detective hat on and let's look for clues. She's a new student, she's walking into a classroom, sweat on her face, and her stomach hurts. Now, let's think about what we already know. I know that when people are nervous, they sweat and sometimes get butterflies in their stomach. Also, when I'm new to something, I get pretty nervous. But I also know that people sweat and get tummy aches when they're sick or they eat really spicy food. Now it's time to make an inference. What do we think is happening? Based on the fact that she's new, sweating, and has a stomach ache, we can infer that the new student is nervous. I believe that this is the best idea based on the clues we see and what we already know. Notice the author never said that the student was nervous. The author wants us to infer that. Sometimes the author doesn't tell us what's happening, but they want us to know based on the actions of the character. This is when you want to make an inference. Inferences can help you understand a book or article when it's unclear or something's not directly said. It's not a guess. It's an idea based on your knowledge and the clues. Real quick, if you found any value so far in the video, smash the like button so this video can spread and help more people. This is the eighth video in the series, Foundations of Reading Comprehension. The goal is to help you become an active participant in the reading process. I want to invite you to join the challenge and watch the whole series. Now, here's a process of inferencing. One, read the story or article. Two, stop and write down the clues or observations that you see in the reading. Three, stop and write down what you already know. Four, make an inference. Ask yourself, based on the clues and what I already know, what is happening? When you make an inference, you can use this phrase. We will look at two examples. One from our article on great white sharks and another from the book Harry Potter. At the end of this video, I will give you a challenge activity. Look at these two sentences. Great white sharks eat at the top of the food chain. They can grow 21 feet long and weigh three and a half tons. Think about how we can describe great white sharks. First, what clues do you see? They eat other animals, they're at the top of the food chain, and they're really big and heavy. Now, what do we already know? I've seen pictures and videos of great white sharks, and I know it's the last thing I want to see swimming up next to me. Now, let's make an inference. Based on the fact that these sharks eat other animals and are at the top of the food chain, I infer that they're scary, dangerous, and that humans should stay away. The author actually confirms our inference in the next two sentences. Few creatures are as scary as sharks. They hunt near where people surf and swim. Now, let's look at a quote from the book, Harry Potter. Albus Dumbledore says this quote in the very first Harry Potter book. To the well-organized mind, death is but the next great adventure. From this quote, what can we infer about Dumbledore? What clues do we see? He says that death is the next great adventure, and the well-organized mind could mean ready. Now, what do we already know? I know that Dumbledore is the most powerful wizard of all time and is really old. Based on this quote, I infer that Dumbledore is not afraid of death and is at peace. Now, here's what I want you to do. Find some books and articles that you enjoy. As you read, try to find the clues the author is leaving for you. From time to time, I want you to stop reading and make an inference. I also want you to try to make inferences to help you summarize. When you think about what or why something is happening, look for clues to see if you can make an inference. Remember this, inferences help you understand what the author is trying to say, even if they don't say it directly. You can use inferences to help you summarize. I have a complete workbook in the video description to help you with the process. You can either print out the PDF or make a copy of the Google Slides and type on it. Make sure to smash the like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.